Income Tax 2023-2024, Schedule C Impact on Tax Return Tax Software Example. Get ready and some coffee because tax preparation is like a choose your own adventure novel. Except every choice leads to more paperwork. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. In our form 1040 example problem using Lacert tax software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're going to start with our standard starting point, our taxpayer, Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang tax man, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, noting that we are focusing in these example problems on the federal income taxes and not on state income tax returns. We're going to start with a single filing status, no dependents. We have the W-2 income to start out with, which we will then compare and contrast to a small business or Schedule C type of income. Standard deduction at the 13850 taxable income then therefore at the 86150, which we can also see and in income tax formula standpoint using our Excel worksheet where we have the income 100,000 standard deduction 13,850 getting us to the taxable income 86,150 tax calculated by the software then at 14,266 back to the software page number two here is that calculation let's go back to the first page now note you might be asking hey if we're going to be talking about a schedule c's sole proprietor type of business why did we start out with w-2 income because we want to start off with a basic kind of scenario to compare and contrast what it would look like if we had the schedule c income of for example a hundred thousand as opposed to w-2 income of a hundred thousand and as we will see there's a, a significant amount of change and complication when we add a, a schedule c to a tax return which leads us to the question and something that we want to plan for if we're a tax preparer or if we're doing our own taxes the question is how much help do we need if we're doing tax preparation what kind of clients do we want to be taking on some strategies that you might keep in mind is some people do lower income more simple tax returns where you're not going to get as much profit per tax return but they're easier to do and you can crank out a whole lot of them if you can get if you can pull in the clientele another strategy would be to focus on higher income tax returns where you're not going to be able to do as many because they're complicated but you're going to have a higher profit margin per return and be picking up money for things like tax planning because of more complex situations with more wealthy individuals they're going to need more kind of tax planning work than possibly uh, lower income individuals often times and then you also might focus in on whether you're going to have business tax returns or not focus in on business tax returns which are kind of in the middle you might think that a schedule c type of business would be something that more wealthy individuals would have but that's not always the case of course you could have a uh, small or lower to moderate income individuals who have the schedule c type of business do we want to be taking on that type of business or not and if so what kind of support do we want with that kind of business because we not only have the data input that we'll have to deal with in the tax return which we will see here is significant but another thing you want to keep in mind is the bookkeeping perspective of it 
because particularly on the lower income side of things where people are doing their own books, we often deal with people who aren't great at that. So you might, uh, to give them the best service, it would be nice if you can kind of help them to clean up the books, which gets you into the whole bookkeeping area. So oftentimes when you get into that area, you might have someone else to help you with that supporting area that does bookkeeping or specializes in bookkeeping. Or a lot of times accountants or CPAs tend towards business tax returns because they have a double entry accounting you know, background and that's the kind of work that they kind of like to uh, pick up. No matter what kind of books we get from the client, we still are gonna have to do some bookkeeping to try to, to try to shore up our books. And I'll try to show that shortly uh, because they will often have like a home office or a car uh, that we need to be deducting the mileage where we have a mileage method, which is different than how they entered in the tax return. So bookkeeping becomes important, uh, at least to some degree, even if you have good bookkeeping that has been done on the client side. You can also specialize by industry. So some industries are going to be a lot more complex. If you deal with industries that have inventory, inventory complicates things a lot. Uh, so you, you might want to say, what kind of industries do I want to specialize in? Which do I not want to specialize in? If you deal with construction companies that have a percentage of completion method, that can be more complex as well. The other thing that you, that you uh, could uh, specialize in is the type of tax return. Do you want to just be picking up people that have a Schedule C, sole proprietorship type tax return, or do you want to have an advise on possibly and help out with other kind of business entities that could be set up such as flow through entities like an S corporation or a partnership uh, or even C corporations, which are separate legal entities that are not, you know, the flow through type of interest. In uh, and when you get into different kind of structures of businesses like that S corporation LLC, oftentimes you might specialize in particular industries that tend towards certain uh, uh, formats of entity structure, given the needs of that particular industry. So you may notice that certain industries tend to have an S corporation structure versus an LLC structure. Certain states might have certain industries that might have more structures tending towards one or the other. So those are all areas that you can specialize in. Those are also all areas that you might work with other people uh, to have as part of your team and possibly also to be able to advise people to so that you can stay out of those areas if they're not where your where your profit margin is if that's not your business if your business is not doing complex uh, tax returns and you're trying to focus on cranking out tax returns then you have to be able to say no to the clients that don't fit your business model, which also is often difficult for many people. Let's first start off by just saying, what if I just had a simple Schedule C and I went from this W-2 income to someone working exclusively in their own business and having all of the money on a Schedule C versus a W-2? Noting that this will not always be the case because many times you'll have someone that has W-2 income and then a Schedule C business on the side, which oftentimes is going to be an easier situation because the Schedule C business is probably not as complex and you don't have to deal with other kind of things like like an IRA or SEPs and whatnot because they might have access to a 401k through their employer as well as health insurance and uh, that kind of thing. But first, let's say let's remove the whole W-2 income, say that's gone. And instead, we're gonna say that they have a Schedule C. So we're gonna say, all right, Schedule C. And I'm not gonna get into the type of business right now. I'm just gonna go right to what if we just had 120,000 of uh, income and then expenses of 20,000, which will net out to that same amount of 100,000 going back to my forms. And then we can go basically to the Schedule C here. So now I'm just looking at the income statement. So now we have income, uh, 120,000 expenses of 20,000. This is the first thing that will of course add complexity to a Schedule C in that when we think about a, an income tax system, the Schedule C actually makes a lot of sense. 
because we don't want to tax people on the gross income, 120000 in this case, but the net income, 100000 We want to allow those types of deductions that are necessary in order to generate the revenue because uh, th those are natural deductions for an income tax type of system. So you have an income statement here, income minus ordinary and necessary expenses, which is going to be basically business uh, deductions, gets us to the net income, and that's ultimately going to be flowing through to, to the Form 1040. So now it's going to be flowing through the Form 1040 here instead of up top. Now, nor normally, when we have W-2 income, it's kind of confusing. The types of deductions we get there are different because you might say, hey, look, I'm, I have some expenses that I have for W-2 income. Why don't I get to write those off? The idea is because, of course, your employer is supposed to be the one that's providing those kind of expenses. Therefore, you don't have an income statement. You don't write those off. And most of the deductions we think about are things like on the Schedule A, which are unnatural to a, a federal uh, an income tax system, right? Because these are personal things that we get deductions for, for whatever reasons from the government, like medical expenses, right? That's personal taxes that you paid are typically personal interest on your home, for example, is personal unless you use it for a business. So why do you get these deductions? Because the IRS is manipulating our behavior for whatever reason, whether that be good or bad uh, for lobbyists or whatever, whatever it is, charitables and stuff, right? These are weird kind of deductions, the Schedule C is actually makes sense because now we're saying this is the income that I have. These are the expenses that I had to generate it. Now, of course, we have to track the expenses. That becomes the difficult part. That's where the bookkeeping comes into play. If you're in a large business, you're going to get possibly 1099s that add up to the income. Or if you're in a business that is dealing with other larger businesses, then you will typically get a 1099 as a sole proprietor. And if you report income less than what the sum of your 1099s are, you're probably going to get a letter from the IRS. They're going to be contacting you because they have that information in a similar way as they do have the W-2 for a sole proprietor. However, uh, if you're in like a hair salon or a massage parlor or the, the restaurant, it's likely that you didn't get a 1099 because the in people you're getting money from are individuals, not other businesses. And those are the businesses the IRS is skeptical of. They tried to crack them all down during COVID. I think I feel like that's why they they went after the restaurants and whatnot and the and the little hair salon and the masseuses because they're the people that, uh, that I, I, my my personal opinion. They're the people that the IRS doesn't like because they get they get payments from cash from customers, which it's harder to track, you know. But in any case, that that's the income side of things. Now, the expense side of things, you're typically not going to have any information that's given to the IRS on the expense side of things. That means it's up to you as the tax preparer and and the taxpayer to track your expenses so that you can deduct them. Otherwise, you're going to be taxed on gross income, which will be very bad, right? That's that's often where people come into tax problems. They have 1099s, have a Schedule C business. The IRS knows about it, comes after them. And the IRS doesn't know about all the expenses because they have no information on the expense side of things. And that is something we really, if you're a tax preparer, you almost have to train your, your clients who aren't good at tracking this information in part because they've always been trained as a W-2 employee. As a W-2 employee, you don't even think about taxes really because you just get it pulled out of your page, your wages and you actually think of tax season as good because the IRS is usually gonna give you a refund. But if they move from a W-2 to a Schedule C, then they often get whacked because they don't do withholdings or estimated payments properly. They don't record their expenses properly and the IRS will come after them for gross income. So the bookkeeping becomes very important. So we have to make sure the bookkeeping is right so that we can at least do the data input. And that'll basically be an income statement. Notice the balance sheet is not here. We only have an income statement. So you might say, why would I use QuickBooks or anything like that, which has a full financial statement, balance sheet and income statement? It's because you still want to use the double entry accounting system. 
So QuickBooks or any other kind of accounting software that has a double entry accounting system really helps you to verify that your income statement is accurate. Otherwise, you're just kind of kind of winging it, right? You're putting together an income statement without a double entry accounting system, which has a lot lower level of assurance. All right, so this amount here, the net income is gonna pull through to the schedule C. You can see it, the, I'm sorry, the schedule one, additional income and adjustments to income, part number one, it's pulling through line number three, business income or loss, which is attached from the schedule C. There's the 100,000. It then is gonna be summed up at the bottom get rid of that check mark and it rolls through to the 1040 as we saw the 1040 now on line eight instead of line one the end result though is the same so you might say well the bookkeeping is difficult but we're ending in the same spot but no we're not why because what is this amount this amount wasn't there before that changes my adjusted gross income and then my standard deduction is the same but what is this whole thing qualified business income deduction that is different and that gives me a different subtotal here. So my taxable income is different. And then on page two, I've got tax of 9,228, which is a lot lower than what it was before. So that's good. But what is this? I've got another other tax down here other than my income tax of 14,129, which brings my total tax to 23,357. So let's say 23,357. So that's bad, right? That's that's higher. So what is going on here? What so 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 there's a lot of changes that are happening even if we get the income statement in there and we get into our net income. So what are those changes? What is going on? All right. The first thing we really have to basically drill down in our mind and understand is that this net income is also going to be subject to self-employment tax. Self-employment tax is the equivalent kind of of payroll taxes, uh, but most people don't really think about it when they're W-2 employees because once again, it just gets pulled out of their earnings in W-2 wages and you're just like, okay, whatever, they're gonna take money out of it. So if, we, if I went back on over here, remember when I entered the W-2, if I said this was a W-2 and I said 100,000 of income, then it tries to calculate social security automatically. It's kind of a flat tax at 6.2%. That comes out to 6,200. And the Medicare at 1.45 comes out to 1,450. These two amounts, if I have W-2 income, don't really impact the tax return because we already paid it. So it's just informational information on the W-2 that we put in here typically. But if we don't have a w-2 we don't have an employer then the government wants us to pay it now notice what we paid here six thousand two hundred plus one four five zero is seven seven thousand six fifty so okay so let's delete that and go okay well then they want us to pay that on our side as an employee uh, a, a schedule c so let's delete this so i'm going to go okay well then Let's see how that works. We go to the schedule SE. So first you might say, hey, wait a second. I'm not an employee. I, I have wages here to pay people, but I didn't pay myself. And the IRS basically, their position is, well, you are the primary worker. You're the labor of your business. Therefore, if you have net income, after you pay your employees, if you paid your employees, then you would be paying self and social security and Medicare or they would and you would be matching it in a similar way as a business, uh, a corporation, for example. But the money that you got in net income, we're gonna assume that you are basically acting as an employee of your own business. Therefore, you need to be paying the tax on it. And that would be the 7,650 about, right? But you are also the employer. So we want you to pay both the employee and employer portion on, in essence, your net uh, tax here. So if I go to the self-employment tax, then we've got the 100,000. I won't go through the calculation. We'll talk about it later. But here it is, the 14 uh, to 129. It's like, whoa, wait a second. I thought we were only paying 7,650 because they think of us as both the employee and employer. So that's a big difference when people are going from a W-2 employee to a Schedule C. If they make the same amount of net income, 
then the self-employment, the, the Social Security and Medicare are basically almost twice as much. Not exactly. We'll go over the calculation later, but you can see it's a lot higher. And, like, and so that's going to be a significant uh, impact because because most people just think of taxes as federal income taxes. So that then this line 12 pulls into uh, the schedule uh, one. Well, no, it pulls into the schedule two and the schedule two is the additional taxes, part two, other taxes, self-employment tax. That's going to sum up and it's going to go then to do to, 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 to 21 and then it goes to the form 1040 page number two. That's where that 14129 comes in. That's huge. But you might say, well, wait a second. If I was a C corporation, then it, the portion of taxes that I pay, I would get half of that as a deduction. That's how it basically works because it would be on the income statement. I should be able to deduct my portion of the self-employment tax like, like, I, like I would if it was like wages of my employees. If you treat me as an employee of myself, I should be able, but I can't deduct it here because then it would change this number, which would cause a circle reference when I try to deduct it, calculate it over here. So I can't deduct, so I'm gonna take my half 7065 that I should get a deduction for because we're trying to mirror what would happen in a C corporation, but I'm going to get that deduction as an above the line deduction. So now I've got my schedule one page number two adjustments to income. That's where that 7065 comes in. So if I go back to the form 1040 and say, okay, what's going on now? We've got the 100,000 minus the 7,065, that's where that 7,000, that gets us to my adjusted gross income has now changed to 92,935. The standard deduction is the same. And then I've got this qualified business income deduction, which is a whole mess in and of itself, which I don't want to dive into now, but obviously it's quite significant uh, because it's a, it's a large dollar amount. And this was an impact of one of the changes made uh, a few years ago and attempt to simplify the code, which it did in part, but you always have these issues when they're trying to figure out how to deal with taxes for corporations and S corporations versus a sole proprietor. And this was kind of like a plug that they used to kind of fix, fix that problem. So then we have that, we're gonna have to deal with qualified business. And so that gets me to the taxable income, which is on page two, here and here. So let's just try to mirror that in our Excel worksheet. So we're gonna say, okay, income. Instead of having that income there, I'm gonna delete it from there, W2, and I'm gonna pull it in from my Schedule C, which I'm gonna just make an income statement, 120,000, and let's say 20,000 here. Now, we don't have to have, like, I could make a whole nother worksheet to create an income statement so I can do my bookkeeping, which I would recommend doing, but I won't do that here. I'm just going to try to get to that 100,000. That pulls into line one. All right, that makes sense. But then I'm going to have to calculate my taxes, which is going to be other taxes over here. So I'm going to let the software calculate it. So I'm going to go back on over and say my self-employment tax was 14,129. So I'm going to say 14,129. Does that make sense? Well, it's about 14 percent of my income from my self-employment income which makes kind of sense because if it was if i'm the employee and the employer it would be 6.2 plus 6.2 for social security 1.45 plus 1.45 so about 15.3 so it's a little bit different than than double you know what you would pay for w-2 if you were an employee which makes sense because they're treating you as the employee and the employer so that pulls in to here on the form 10 1040 as uh the other tax so this tax down here and so that comes out to 28 that's where we are right now but then we also have half of that that's deductible above the line right there which is populating for me already so if i go into the adjustments to income, uh, I'm gonna have then the deductible self-employment tax. This calculation is just taking the number that was pulled in the Schedule C and dividing by two. So half of that is pulling in. So that's good. That's where we got to that 92,936. So that's gonna be, duh, duh, duh. so uh, 92,936 
Standard deduction is still at 13850. I'm just going to plug this number in for now, letting the software doing the calculation for the qualified business income deduction 15817. So I'm going to say all right 15817 and that gets me to the 63269. So 63269 page 2 calculating the tax. I'll let the software do that. Federal income tax at the 2 the 9228. So this is now at 9228, which is a lot lower, but I also have to include the self-employment. That brings me to the total tax of the 23357, 23357. So the point is there's a lot going on. Even if we just have a, the bookkeeping is simple and we just basically pull in this uh, 100,000 here. Uh, obviously the bookkeeping adds a lot of, uh, information in detail on it and some bookkeeping that you're going to have to do even if you get a solid income statement is usually going to include the car and truck because they might want to use a mileage method and that means that you're going to have to adjust their accounting to deal with a mileage method they also will often have like a home office situation in which case you, you're going to have whatever bookkeeping they do you're going to still have to take their information to calculate the home office, which is often uh, kind of an issue. And if they have depreciable items, uh, then you're going to have to deal with the depreciation, which is often uh, kind of a kind of a pain for many people if we're not comfortable uh, with doing uh, depreciation. And it could mess up or complicate your schedule A if they're itemizing because if they're using a home office, it's gonna have an allocation between the loan, the mortgage interest uh, that might be on the Schedule A versus the Schedule C, as well as the property taxes. And then you also have planning type of things uh, that could come up, such as uh, if their sole proprietor business is their main business, do they have health insurance? Uh, uh, and if not, then you might be dealing with uh, uh, health insurance that might be self-employed health insurance that you might have to deal with and have questions about that, as well as they don't have access to a 401k plan if they don't have another W-2. So maybe they want to set up a 401k plan, which is complex. So then you can you get into the simple or the SEP, which are types of 401k plans and so on and so forth. So you can see that uh, if they're moving fully in from a W-2 to a Schedule C, it's not just the bookkeeping. The data input of the bookkeeping will still be complex. You can't outsource all the bookkeeping because even if the bookkeeping was perfect, you're still going to have to deal with like the home office and the auto expense and that kind of stuff. And you, you pretty much can't avoid the fact that you're going to have tax planning complex scenarios as well because of things like a SEP or a 401k or a simple often being tied to the business, right? And things like the, the self-employment, which can be significant kind of planning uh, areas. So the point is that if you're doing tax preparation for uh, uh, businesses, then what stuff do you wanna pick up? And what stuff do you wanna have a team around you, a, a network uh, to be helping you out with? And what clients do you want to avoid because their their situation doesn't line up to your tax preparation business and how best can you you advise them to go elsewhere without uh, without being a jerk without them hating you or whatever <laughs> which is not the easiest thing so those are some tips as we dive into uh as we dive into the schedule see also just quick note that you're always going to be dealing with people who, who want to to also make uh, businesses that are Schedule Cs into S corporations and LLCs or even C corporations, because and sometimes they have, there's totally legitimate reasons to do that. But again, you need to be wary of that. Be aware of it because some people that they're just lawyers that like to set up S corporations and LLCs whether it be warranted or not possibly and so you also have to be aware of those kind of things as well because you're always when you deal with these business situations there's always some 
person out there that's got the new bright idea that's trying to pull in clients or get people to sign into whatever it is that they are doing which which could be good could be bad but that's where you know the advice comes in and building trust with uh clients 